a good fit, plug into the chip, clear the security bit, erasing all the flash, and then dump the memory to a file. Okay? Now you can only do that once, because once you reboot it after that, you're, you're SOL. Okay? So you've got to be very careful about this. But once you dump that RAM to a file, well, what's in that RAM? The key. Right, exactly, the key. Good. You guys are paying attention. Okay. So I wrote a tool called uh, ZB Good Find to go along with uh, Travis's interesting finding. So here I've got a memory dump, 8K memory dump from a target customer that I was working with, okay? And that's just 8K of RAM that I dumped off of this particular device. And I'm going to run ZB Good Find. I'm going to read in this encrypted packet capture file. I'm going to specify the memory dump file. And it's going to try to decrypt packets in that packet capture again and again and again using every possible value from that memory dump. Okay? So it uses the first 16 bytes. Is this a key? No, it didn't decrypt properly. Fine. The next byte after that, bytes 2 through 17. Did this decrypt right? No. How about 3 through 18? Okay? 4 through 25, I'm bad at math, okay? So, you know, I'm going to decrypt it over and over and over again. And what ZB Goodfind tells us is after 6,264 guesses, here's the encryption key for the device, okay? These are real attacks, real opportunities for us. And the tools exist to be able to implement them today. We've reported this, in, in this issue. Travis reported at Texas Instruments. I've spoken to them independently about this issue. They know it exists. They cannot fix it without refabbing the hardware, which is a big problem for them. Their solution is that it will be fixed in next generation hardware chips. Question? How did you know you had success here? How did I know I had success? Because I was able to decrypt the packet successfully in the checksum that is uh, um, a part of the encrypted payload portion checked out with that key. Okay, so the the MIC of that packet was valid after I decrypted it. Good question. If there was no MIC, then I would have to use some kind of fuzzy logic to say, well, it looks like a Zigbee packet, okay, and do it multiple times and see if that would work. Okay, once we have the key information, Wireshark includes some Zigbee support now. So you can use Killer B, take a packet capture, open it up in Wireshark, and then go to Edit Preferences Zigbee, enter the key, and it will decrypt the packets for you. Wireshark expects the key to be in reverse byte order. Okay? So in this case here, the key told me it is C0, C1, C2, C3, dot, 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 CF down here. In Wireshark, you would enter the key as C, F, C, E, C, D, C, C, dot, dot, dot. Okay? So just so you know that, if you're trying to do it and it doesn't work, make sure you enter the key in reverse order, because that's the way Wireshark expects it to be. Okay. The Killer B API, in order for you to develop your own tools on Killer B, I think it's a very straightforward and very simple interface. And it's got 100% less the suck than the Lorcon V1 interface. It's great. Okay? Tools like ZBD Sniff, which does the over-the-air key delivery, are about 10 lines of Python because it's the killer bee library that does most of the work for you. Okay? So this is just a, an example. Um, because killer bee is Python, okay, um, you can easily integrate it with other Python tools. When I do fuzzing against a target, I use the Sully framework from Pedro Mamini. Okay? Sully is Python-based. So here, I create a little script where I imported the killer bee library, the Sully library, and I started with a data payload here for a source address. Okay? I use Sully to initialize a fuzzing convention. I created a static portion of a Zigbee frame. Okay? I added the source address, and then I told Sully, just fuzz the rest of the packet. Okay? I make it look kind of valid in the beginning, enough for the recipient to process it, and I tell Z Sully, just fuzz the rest of it. I instantiate an object called KB, which is the killer B object. I set the channel to channel 26, and then I loop on Sully's S mutate function, which generates a next, the next mutation each time, and I inject the rendered portion, and then I just hex dump the data out. Okay? 
very, very easy using killer B and Sully to make a Zigbee fuzzer. Now, this isn't a very particularly intelligent fuzzer, right? And I'm not measuring responsiveness from the target. Those are still problems that you have to work out, but very easy to get stuff going very, very quickly, okay? Um, but anybody a Python person here? Python? Uh, do you like my uh, string concatenation on the top there? Is that nice? You like that? I did that just to piss off Python people because it's very ineffective in Python to concatenate strings that way. And Python people get all bent about stuff like that. So that's, that's what that was for you, you know? Yeah, OK. All right. So you know, I wanted to show you guys some of the good stuff that is coming down the road with Zigbee. And, and I wanted to talk about some of the issues. I think that there's still a lot of interesting research here to be done, OK? For example, Let's say your utility is providing a Zigbee electrical meter on the side of your house. You're providing the Zigbee thermostat and the Zigbee appliances to control with that thermostat. Where's the security demarcation line? Where does the vendor's, the utility security responsibility end and where does your responsi security responsibility start? We're talking about building these big networks that join each other, but nobody's really stepped up to say, uh, you know, I'm in charge. The utility doesn't want to be a password reset manager for all the customers that forget their keys. And they can't use a static key for everybody's devices because that would be a bad thing. There's no answer there yet. So I think that's going to be interesting to see. Key provisioning on Zigbee is hard. Over the air key delivery is the most flexible and least secure. You could do static provisioning at the factory, but what happens when a device goes missing? What, what is your responsibility then? You need to rotate that key on every single device. And how do you do that? By reflashing every single Zigbee device in your network. Okay? In places like warehouses, that Zigbee device is 40 feet on a rafter. Nobody can get there. Okay? That's not an easy problem. Zigbee uses the CCMP mechanism for encryption. Okay? CCM uses AES in counter mode. Counter mode is a way of using AES as a stream cipher. And the golden rule of stream ciphers is that you can never reuse the same key twice. Okay? Well, Zigbee doesn't have a good solution for that. There is no key rotation, which is essential so that you never reuse a key twice. Zigbee doesn't have key rotation. So ultimately, we're violating the rules of using the CCMP protocol and AES in counter mode just by deploying Zigbee networks. That's broken, and they don't have a solution for it. The Zigbee spec says, once you get to the end of your initialization space, stop all processing. That's their solution. Just stop and manually reprovision all the devices. Remember how I said Zigbee has very poor replay protection? This is why. Because the vendor can't do that. They can't just stop. Okay? The network needs to continue operating. Zigbee spec says stop, but vendors know that that won't be acceptable. Each vendor makes their Zigbee stack available as open source because they want to encourage hardware developers to adopt their stack. You can download any Zigbee stack you want right now. Well, as an attacker, as a pen tester, I love it when I have source code. That's awesome. I don't need to fuzz anything. I just run my static analyzer. I grep for bugs. Okay, No problem. All right. We're going to continue seeing Zigbee in the future. It's not going away. It's becoming more and more prevalent. And they are powerful. And there are lots of funding options to make Zigbee useful, not the least of which is the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act, okay, to continue the deployment of Zigbee technology. We're going to see a lot of this coming forward. My issue is that we need to have tools to test this stuff out so we can know what the problems are. Before this talk, if I said to you, do you have Zigbee technology in your organization? What would you say? Well, I don't know. Well, how do you find out? Well, before this, we had no way to do it. How would you find out now? You get a stick, you walk around with Zigbee Stumbler or Zigbee Find, okay? Well, is it encrypted or is it unencrypted? Well, we can use ZB Dump, take a packet capture, look at it in Wireshark. Are you doing over the air key provisioning? Well, how do we know? ZB Decent will tell you. Before Killer B, we had no answers to this stuff. I'm not the bad guy. That's my point, okay? We need these tools to answer.